being at this workshop was really useful because it sort of inspires me to remember the power of the collective story. Um, that as we're advocating, we're not just advocating for our own organizations, but we're really advocating for the entire sector. And that is really, I think, what's going to resonate most with our elected officials, primarily because it's what resonates most with our public. And so I want you to know you have a friend. Um, in the mayor's office, but I can't do it by myself, you can't do it by yourself, we all have to work together. <coughs> Public service is a noble thing. My message is very simple. I want young people to know, particularly your budgets, on recommendations. And you'll go through department by department or line by line uh, each of the items in the budget, and specifically, uh, it may be that the chairman says, you know, for a particular member, I want you to focus on X. Anybody can talk about anything, but just for efficiency, you focus on X, you focus on Y, and then that devolves into a series of conversations with Rob and the people in the administration, with the council of auditors, and then you bring it all back together during what can be sometimes rather long days and sometimes messy hearings. Because at the end of the day, you've got to put together this great big budget, and, and uh, unlike Congress, you know, ours has to balance. Are there examples that you can oh, yeah. share with us of uh, times when lobbying or advocacy, people coming to you, weren't effective? What are the, what are the mistakes that we make, I guess, is the question that I'm asking. The full disclosure, uh, I've had some spectacular successes, and the reason I've had them is because I've had some spectacular failures, and uh, <laughs> learned from those uh, spectacular failures. Uh, and I guess the if there's any recurring theme you're going to hear in my all my answers today to all your questions, it's the, the lesson I learned a long time ago. Uh, I think you heard a little bit today. You can't just go running up to the elected officials when you need money and say, hey, I really need money. Uh, that's not going to work. And in our case, uh, the zoo, Jacksonville Zoo and Gardens, is owned by the city. Um, and yet, and as that, 10% of our budget comes from the city, a little less than 10%, but it's about a million dollars a year. And I got to the zoo and, and realized we have these donors who give us $10,000 a year or $5,000 a year, and we treat them better than we treat the city council people. We just expect them to give us money. And my, uh, I guess the recurring theme you'll hear from me is you've got to treat uh, elected officials as, as, uh, as donors and make them part of your uh, organization, share with them your successes, let them know what your, your challenges are. Give some data that shows how if I implement this program, we expect crime to go down this much, or we expect homelessness to go down this much, or we expect transportation to be improved this much. And, you know, because unfortunately in these economic times, it's about dollars and cents, and, and folks on the local, state, and federal level are, are making tough decisions. They pulled together wonderful resources from the city, uh, from the University of North Florida, uh, folks who are familiar with the, uh, the business of lobbying and advocacy, and uh, the city council members who were there uh, offered us a great deal of insight into how they like to be contacted and how they like to be included uh, in the discussion with nonprofits about the work that we do. Today's session was just wonderful because it's yet a further development of the entire effort the nonprofit centers put together to bring the sector together, to advocate jointly for all of the issues that we all care about. And it just, it brings everything up to the next level and helps organizations that don't know how to get involved become more involved with advocacy.